Hello, dear friends, my lovely audience, and welcome to the East West Show. Jack Chow is hosting. The East West Show is exclusively sponsored by Wolfers, the Belgium royal family designated brand of jewelry that has 400 years of glorious history, and each was hand forged by 10 generations of uh, the number one craftsman on the global earth. Altogether, the name of Wolfers stands for a testimony to the spectacular and a share of the royal glory. Uh, that brings us back to the show. I'm so glad that I have my invitation answered by this great lady, a great friend uh, to myself and great friend to the community and to the show. Her name is the Betty Tom Chu. Uh, yes, she is a wonderful woman of Southern California. Not only that her name was on lots of important publications, but the fact she never sees, never takes a recipe for fighting, from, from fighting for justice. Uh, uh, she was the former candidate of Congress, and she was of all, all the way an, an attorney, she was a banker, she was a mayor of uh, Montgomery Park. Now she's a proud member of the Orange County Asian American Citizen Alliance, who has something that I would like to address a little later. Okay, next to her is another great friend of mine. You may ask why you get all the greatest people today, <laughs> because today is so special, right? Okay, his name is Mark, Mark Ang. He is the uh, current president of the uh, Orange County Asian American Citizen Alliance, and he is also the founder and the CEO of Asian Industry B2B. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, to both of you, welcome to the show. Thank it's, you. It's friends. good to see you again, Jack. Uh, yeah, I feel very excited and to have uh, these big, big friends of mine to cover me on the show, right? Uh, because today is very special. Uh, two days later, on the 13th of uh, December, marks the anniversary, 82nd anniversary of the Nanking Rape, Nanking also known as Nanking Rape, Nanking Mascar, uh, in which, during which period of uh, one month and a half, six week period, 300,000 of uh, Chinese innocent people were slaughtered by Japanese invaders. And also today's show commemorates the special day, the sad day, the tearful day, the, the shameful day on us of December 7th, 1941, when the same Jap invaded our Pearl Harbor and bombed our Pearl Harbor. To those of you, my dear friends, this show, the purpose of this show is to make a constant call to keep that in mind for the purpose as follows that my friend Betty will explain why we do so, please. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the most important factors of reminding us about the Pearl Harbor incident, as well as the Nanking massacre and rape, which really started the Pacific War um, in uh, China. The importance of that is not only to remind us the need for world peace, but it also is to remind us of World War II in which mm -hmm. China and America forged a friendship that helped each other for peace. Yes. And um, one of the things that I think gets overlooked, Jack, is that during the Pacific War, 
there were approximately 70 to 85 million people that were killed during uh, World War II. But of that, China had really, as a single nation, had the largest amount of people killed during World War II. True. And whereas Russia had a larger amount, but that included all of their territories. Mm -hmm. They, when you take them as a separate uh, country, then they rank only second as mm -hmm. to China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that number would have been much greater in China had the United States not helped China in fighting the Pacific War. Which is War. absolutely true. And mm -hmm. in addition to that, but by fighting the Pacific War, <clears throat> mainly in China, that helped mm -hmm. Pearl Harbor casualties to be much less in number. Yes, Because right. mm -hmm. the um, Chinese civilians who fought in that war with no guns, no military equipment, mm -hmm. just their farming equipment or whatever they could get, they killed enough Japanese yeah. Imperial exactly. Army. We hold on to that for a little later because okay. I have to ask Mark to give us a comment, your statement of why we do this commemoration show. Well, I think, uh, you know, Betty covered a lot of the, you know, why, why it's important, you know, as far as history goes. But, you know, for me, I take it on the perspective that we should never forget um, history. And I, I see a troubling trend of uh, schools taking out history and not remembering this and especially us Chinese that have been here for multiple generations um, Start you know that that part of our history has been um, you know forgotten and not as um, Remembered so I applaud you for doing a show like this to commemorate a moment in history to remember a time less than 100 years ago that um, has that you know had long-standing ripples and effects on um, the trajectory of China and the world. I have to say in front of my camera, in front of my audience, that you both are 100% absolutely right. Because people are, people seem too easy to forget things. Especially people, once being way invaded, once being raped, once being killed, their forefather being killed, started forgetting things, right? Including ourselves. Think about Pearl Harbor. Think about our soldiers. That a single day, 2,000 soldiers died in gunfire. Yes. That a single day, that a single day, all right? In China during the massacre, all six weeks, 30, 300,000 people, 300, what does that mean mathematically? Mm -hmm. 300,000. If you were talking about uh, Tiananmen Square, all right, Tiananmen Square holds about 500,000. That's 75% of Tiananmen Square. Da 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 do 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 all killed. Should a human forget that? Yeah. Betty is exactly right on one huge point that without Suppose there had not been the American help, we should suffer longer. Yeah. The World War II will not end as it ended. So what specific numbers we got to come back to you and specific facts that you want to say that the friendship between China and the United States are built on blood, yeah. on, on, on life, life death struggle. Well, I find it very interesting that when you add up the figures of what the Russians suffered during the war yes. as well as the Chinese, it amounts almost to 50% of those killed mm -hmm. during the war. And when we talk about the Nanjing, uh, or I call it the Nanking rape, mm -hmm. Um, we talk about the 300,000 in killings, but it wasn't just like a killing in a normal warfare. They were killing innocent 
civilians. Yes. That's not a military guy. They were citizens. Uh, they were raping with the most absolute torture mm. women and children in the grossest manner, gang rape, and uh, young children as uh, preteen children, they were raping, and things that they were, just unspeakable things that they were doing. Cracking in a woman. Oh, gosh. They cut the, the tummy open, took the baby out, put the baby on top of pyramid. You call that human? <laughs> The, the you can't take it. The sufferings were just unspeakable. What a shame if we people still call ourselves people. Forget that. Yeah, go back to the baby, please. I'm sorry for the emotion. Yes, it, it is quite an emotion because it still took some time before America rose to helping China fight the war. Because the Nanking Massacre occurred in 1937. And when that happened and during the, the later years, the Chinese in America tried to enlist in the service. Mm -hmm. They were not afraid to fight in the European War or the Pacific War. But because of the Chinese Exclusion Act, mm -hmm. it, Enacted here in America, the first legislation that targeted a specific race. Yes. And in a very discriminatory manner. Mm. They uh, were not permitted mm. to enlist. Mm. Um, so it took some time sure, sure. before President Roosevelt allowed them to go over. So during the Nanking Massacre, it was only China and uh, uh, Japan. Poor thing. Uh, my dear friend, my love, thank you very much. My dear friend, my lovely audience, is, it is uh, quite a disaster to recall those dark days. The darkest days uh, about these animals, the Jap animals, I call them Jap animals, what they did, and also it is more significant to remind us ourselves at the darkest days who extends a helping hand, a big helping hand, by dying, by sacrificing their fighters themselves. Right? And also, he, she mentioned a very huge point, the Chinese Americans joined the US Army. Right? For that, I ask you one simple question. Can we forget them? Yet, we do forget them. It was not because, if it was not because of this lady, they will, ah. All right, anyway, let's take a moment out. We will be right back. Hello, dear friends, my lovely audience, and welcome back to the show, Jack Chow on the East West Show uh, with the Walfers as the uh, exclusive sponsor. Walfers, the Belgium royal family designated brand of jewelry with a 400 years of history and the hand forged by 10 generations of the master craftsman on the global earth. The name of Walford altogether stands for a testimony to the spectacular and a share of a royal glory. Uh, back to the show, my dear friend, ladies and gentlemen. It is a special day that we do a show to commemorate what happened during World War II in Nanking, 300,000 innocent Chinese, not military, not military, uh, non-military fighters were killed by the Jap animals. And four years later, on December on the 7th, and, uh, on a Sunday, about 8 o'clock 
7.55 in the morning. Another crime being committed, the Jap animals bombed our Pearl Harbor. For this, page after page, my question, are we entitled to forget? Yeah, I think uh, it's the, how we approach it, right? We can't stay in this, the, the hatred and, you know, um, because we're many generations removed. It's kind of like reparations for slavery. Um, sooner or later, we need to heal those wounds. So I, I, I believe Japan has shown um, repentance and penance for these uh, over the years. However, we must never forget. No, and that they is haven't. Why. They haven't done anything. No apologize at all. No apology at all. And that that they need to work on that. But you know, um, we need we need to start um, talking about uncomfortable things like this. I mean, uh, I think when you shared that story about the pregnant woman, um, that is one of the less mentioned elements of the Nanking ma massacre. Yeah. I mean, that is that, you know, the, the word rape, right? It's people are so afraid to say it and talk about how atrocious some of these wartime crimes were in the past. But we must remember that because we can easily slip just one bad dictator comes in and the world could be at war again. That's good, why good we point, need good to point, remember. Good point. I'm double checking with my friend Benny that I use the word hatred. I do have the hatred. I say my statement is the following, correct me if I'm wrong, right? My hatred will not be wiped out until an official apology is issued by the Japanese government. You know what is worse than the failure of the Japanese government to properly and uh, in, in a very a strong voice apologize sincerely for what happened in the Nanking massacre as well as mm -hmm. World War II. Not only is there failure to make reparations to the families and to China, but more importantly, they fabricate the stories. In other yes. words, he mentioned about textbook. The yeah. 300 thousand massacres that mm -hmm. occurred in mm -hmm. Nanjing. It would, they wiped out all their records mm -hmm. and now some of their historians and some of their government, current government officials say that as little as 20,000 mm -hmm. or 10,000 yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. were mm -hmm. killed and that it was not a result of the Japanese invading Nanjing and also invading the safe space that Nanjing had. But they are making up the story that it was just some confusion with wow. reference to a civilian a disagreement. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And mm -hmm. so not only mm -hmm. their failure to apologize but for the wow. government not to speak out. Shameless uh, is the word. Yes. Shameless is the they word. They are shameless in permitting the mm. uh, propaganda to mm. continue that they were not at fault. They did wow. not start it and that the 300,000 figures is just a figment of their imagination when 200,000 minimum has been uh, uh, verified by other individuals that were there in Nanjing that were from different countries, like from Russia. And um, so I, I uh, in fact, several years ago when Prime Minister Abe came to the Los Angeles area, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I helped organize with the Korean faction a protest at the uh, Biltmore Hotel. Mm -hmm. We were very proud that the Chinese had mm -hmm. over five busloads plus individual cars that went down where we were able to cover three sides of the block where the Biltmore Hotel was oh. to protest that what and to ask for action. the apology. What a heroic action. I give you big hands for that, all right. Uh, yes, back to, uh, to, to Mark. 
You mentioned about they are revising their textbooks for the new generations to totally forget, mm -hmm. to to and downplay, to I logically, mean, to logically forget. Yeah, because no one teach them, right? Yeah, I'm shocked to hear actually about this uh, revisionist with the numbers, and it's very easy to do that post-war, post a lot of time. You know, a hundred thousand can easily become ten thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, you just drop a zero. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of um, that's a real worry of mine. I think you know, being more focused on the local issues here in Southern California, seeing what the school districts are doing. Um, it's amazing, um, you know, at least domestically, they're doing revisionist history on the Bay of Pigs invasion, for example, in the 1960s. I mean, even that is a little more recent, but um, certainly um, that's why uh, Chinese American Citizens Alliance, which, you know, Betty and I are part of, is a very important uh, organization to preserve that uh, Chinese history. And it shouldn't just be Chinese American history because a lot of our Chinese Americans here have roots back uh, going back to uh, Nanking. I Africa. sincerely, mm -hmm. with 100% respect to both of you, not because you are my friend. Uh, do it, I do it because what you have done, right? So, to be a Chinese American is not an easy job. No, that's why you, your show right now bringing uh, up this right. issue is so important. Thank you. Where's so the handshake? Important. Yeah, where's the handshake? Because you have to be, you have to have a big heart, big as your chunk, <laughs> right? Right? Uh, I'm saying trunk. I'm sorry, big as your trunk, and you have to have a good memory, good as an elephant, something like that. All right. So now you mentioned about record. You mentioned about statistics about death, right? Okay. Now, according to the international. Uh, military court of the Far East, those evidences, those number count, was not even a single number provided by the Chinese side. Mm. It was provided by the international society. Mm. And it was provided by a wonderful American, John McGee. Oh. He, yeah, he used his own camera hiding himself in the corner, shoot all the, almost every scene, every day. They kill, you think about the number, given 30 days, give 30, 300,000, that's what? That's 10,000 per day. day. There's only 24 hours a day. So within 24 okay. hours, suppose you work for 12, all right? Within 12 hours, you kill 10,000, that's, quite a job. Yeah. So this wonderful American, John McGee, with 12 copies, rolls of copies, recorded the killing, black and white, right? And plus on top of that, if that's not enough, all the record, most of the record were, were, were taken by the Japanese invaders themselves. They took killing as a proud, as a proud. Yes. Once they kill one, kill two whatsoever, they bring the roll to a printer shop, printing shop, to have it printed. It was, yeah, go ahead. There was even competition to how many you can kill how, yeah. within yeah. a certain There's competition, of time. yes. Yeah. And, and there was one uh, printer shop owner, his name, his name is Feng Zhou, right? He secretly made an extra copy of everything oh. submitted. Wow. Wonderful. So, at the court, he was there. He stood tight, stood tall. Uh, let's take a moment out. We'll be right back.
Hello, dear friends, my lovely audience. Welcome back to the show, Omidia Advertising. I get so excited. <laughs> uh, okay, now, this shop owner made an extra copy, and in court, he stood tall. They gave all those. It is not mine, not from anybody else, from the killers themselves. You mentioned there was a killing competition. There was a one killed 103, there was another one killed 105. So the 105 was a winner, and they were on wow. newspaper as a headline of that day. Luckily, thank God, thank heaven, those two were killed, were executed wow. at the court decision. But there was one, the prince, that was exonerated. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There was one, anyway, anyway, uh, for, for that, you know, sometimes when the trauma is too big, you can never forget. Mm -hmm. You can never forget, right? Mm -hmm. But Jack, what's wonderful is that you are having this show is very important as it relates to our current events today. The relationship between China and United States needs to be reminded as they negotiate with each other on trade, mm -hmm. on the Hong Kong democracy situation, that the cooperation between the two countries can be so instrumental yes. in terms of promoting democracy and world peace in negotiations with North Korea and in terms of economic prosperity for both countries to help out other countries. That's why we feel so proud of ourselves for doing this show. Do you think, do you agree with me, Mark? Oh, absolutely. And you know what Betty is uh, really saying is uh, we should always look at history um, and learn from history so that we sometimes learn what not to do. We should never get to a place where we're that out of hand that we see our other fellow, uh, you know, other countries um, uh, and get into such conflicts and, um, and treat war as a sport. That is, you know, that is terrible. Exactly, exactly. Sometimes people need to be reminded mm -hmm. and sometimes people need to be reminded with the ironic fact. Mm -hmm. Right. I give you, you know, Song Hu Zhan Yi the Shanghai War Battle, when the National Army Guo Jun mm -hmm. fought the Japanese and so bravely, so so devastatingly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then to some point, the Japanese the bombers came, Ooh, yes. like that, right? Everybody was kind of trying to run away, hide away. All of a sudden, in the sky, there appeared different airplanes, different fighter planes. You know what the civilians did? They ran out. In spite of the bombing, still bombing though, yeah. they go there, Americans, Americans. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the, that's the help. That's why God has given power to the United States, has given power to China. And I am hoping that the two countries recognize how great the world can be if, if they can right. work together yes. in fairness. We can't forget who we are. Mm -hmm. And we can't forget where we're from. No. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Our heritage is very important to maintain. And really, um, you know, I'm very heartened by some latest events that have happened. Um, and Betty will expound on this a little more, but you know, our organization uh, traveled to Washington DC earlier this year because we were so concerned about when um, a Princeton uh, graduate student um, of Chinese descent um, that was you know, basically an American. He lives, he has a family, he has a wife and a young child, and he was in prison for three years and he just got released. 
So Betty, you want he to was, talk to us a little he bit about that? He was sentenced for 10 years in jail as a spy for the United States in Iran. Matter of fact, he didn't do the spying work. Mm -hmm. Pardon? He Matter is, of fact, he didn't, he didn't do the spy. No, yeah, he, he was, was not, not a spy. A spy. The, the Princeton guy, right? The Princeton oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. guy I recall was that. in Iran for purposes of uh, doing research on China's history in Iran because that mm -hmm. was his major to get <laughs> his uh, graduate degree at mm -hmm. Princeton was China's history. And he was being supported by the Princeton University in that endeavor. Mm -hmm. And instead of releasing him, he was in prison uh, and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Yes. And mm -hmm. he had a little son, only three years old. So when we were, we were, happened to be in uh, Washington, D.C. to celebrate uh, which I didn't, I didn't have the yeah, chance yeah, yeah, to appear yeah, yeah. well, We want to mention that. Yeah. Um, the, huge, the gold medal bill. Huge, huge, huge But thing, we were yeah. there and we visited um, uh, the New Jersey congressman, uh, Congressman Chris Smith, and voiced to him our support and our willingness to participate in any way that we could in the release of, uh, in petitioning President Trump to negotiate yeah, for yeah. the release of Mr. Wang. And uh, they were very helpful to mm. us. They gave us the contacts to Princeton University, mm. which we called to indicate our uh, support of that. So we were very happy to hear that mm -hmm. uh, he yeah. was released. So our visit there actually um, satisfied three purposes, that very short visit. The gold medal bill, uh, the uh, the uh, Princeton graduate, and also on Hong Kong democracy. Mm. Uh, that's why I say that I uh, show my respect 100%. I do not do it for no reason. And I do it for what you have done. And what I have witnessed what you have done. I do have witnessed what you have done. Another big move for this wonderful woman and the group that she was leading, and also Mark was involved the big, big time, was the gold medal issue. Can you please uh, let me uh, bring us a little picture within two minutes. We'll move the heavy duty stuff to the to next uh, segment, please. Well, uh, as you know, uh, I authored, co-authored a bill uh, with John G, who was then uh, the founder of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance of Orange He's County. He's also, by the way, a friend of mine. A, um, a bill to award a congressional gold medal in honor of the service of Chinese American World War II veterans. Mm. That gold medal would be displayed in the Smithsonian uh, Institute and also uh, travel as an exhibit, as well as having replicas given to family members of mm -hmm. World War II mm -hmm. veterans and yeah. surviving World War mm -hmm. II veterans. It took, as it was introduced, uh, I was at President Trump's inauguration in 2016 when we uh, mm -hmm. had the idea, I mean in 2017, the idea and so the bill was introduced on May 4th, mm -hmm. 2017, with the help of Congressman Ed Royce. And uh, in December 20th, and I know you've had this on your yes, show yes, yes, yes. many mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. and on December 20th of 2018, last year, President Trump signed that bill. And um, that only took us a year and a half, whereas other groups have spent in excess of 10 years to get their congressional gold medal. Mm -hmm. I recall that right after that, you and I and Mr. John G did a show celebrating the big, big victory. And it is not only a big victory, but it, I call it historical victory because they were racing against time. Mm -hmm. The fact is that those are do we know how many are left? Very few. Very, Very few, few, right? In fact, we had a uh, ceremony in, in, the, in the White House um, earlier this year in January, and uh, only five 
uh, showed up and many traveled from far, far away. So you're looking at the average age uh, of their 90s now, which is beyond little, our typical life Little more than a handful? Yes, just five. Five showed up. Oh, yeah. only that five. Could, that could that travel. Could that, could yeah. travel yeah. that could travel to Washington, yeah. Washington yeah. D.C. Yeah. And, and, and to those who are still alive, cannot travel though, can we bring the medal yes. to the bed, to the bedside? That is um, part of our organization's efforts. We want to, um, so if anyone out there is connected with um, a World War II veteran that is still living, we will create, we'll have the, a replica is the medal of ready? the medal. Yes. They can contact you and you will contact us. We mm -hmm. will have the ceremony we will hand deliver. either at their city council meetings, their supervisor World meeting, or we can have it Chinese here. Chinese American veterans. World War yes. II Chinese American veterans. And, whoever, and their families. Uh, mm -hmm. And the family. Whoever mm -hmm. are still alive, Correct. they deserve, of course, they always deserve. They will see in person mm -hmm. a gold medal signed by President Donald Trump and the bill written by this great lady and her mm -hmm. group of people. Yeah, and let me once again stress, Betty Tom Chu authored that bill, yeah. okay, with the help of John G. Mm -hmm. But let's understand that um, there's, it's, she's a national treasure. The fact that she <laughs> wrote this bill and made it happen when yeah. so many people did, did not act on it. In the you know? introduction, I told everybody she started as an attorney and mm -hmm. a banker. She knows the law, she knows money. And she knows how to get and things done. she knows, done. yes, everything. She's a doer. And of course, that's why she not only motivated with the bill, mm -hmm. but actually yeah. write the bill, compose the bill. Absolutely. All right, my dear friend, uh, we have to take a short moment now. Uh, when we come back, we totally want to put our pieces together to make one huge point. That is, we are not entitled to forget anything. Stay with us. Hello, dear friends, my lovely audiences. Uh, welcome back to the show, Jack Chow on the East West Show, uh, which is exclusively sponsored by Wolfers. Wolfers, the Belgium royal family, designated the brand of jewelry with 400 years of glorious history and hand forged Betty Knows by 10 years of, uh, uh, by 10 generations of the number one craftsman on the global mm -hmm. earth. Together, the name Wolfer stands for a testimony to the spectacular and the share of the royal glory, right? Uh, back to the show. I'm getting more and more excited as we go, as we find out that remembering history is only part one of lesson, of the book. But lesson two is that to actually do something, right? By talking actually doing something. I mean, with my eyewitness, I'm so convinced about what they have been doing, what they have done so far. We were on the topic of having a race against time, running against time before those wonderful service members, the veterans, the World War II Chinese American veterans are still able to see mm -hmm in life what they have earned, mm -hmm. right? So what have you done to make sure that you find any of the existing of them, please? Well, um, right, right now, we just actually threw a veterans banquet um, to honor all World War II uh, veterans, as well mm -hmm. as ge general veterans mm -hmm. who have fought in other wars. Oh, like by Korea the way, do you have a design of the, of the medal? Uh, it has been designed mm -hmm. and it's now being cast. I don't have a copy of the But do design. you have a, just a graphic? I no. can, 
Uh, yeah, okay. when we get it, we'll send it to you. Good, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Go so ahead. yeah, we have uh, we have uh, gone out to the community to try to find these veterans, but they're uh, few and far between. We did find our uh, good friend uh, Sean Lee is actually the descendant of uh, four four of his um, uh, uncles, uncles mm. were actually uh, served in World War II, and he's a ch uh, Chinese American, I think third to fourth generation. Mm. So we honored um, the f those four at our ceremony. They have since passed, but that is actually typical of that age group. And this is why um, it's so important that, you know, Betty and, and John and the rest of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance um, uh, engage in these efforts because we were able to at least the few that are still alive, but they're so few and far between. But I'm willing to travel to Washington or any other states. Oh, I thought of somebody. Them. I thought of somebody. Uh, uh, Mr. Chen, who mm -hmm. was the fuel uh, operator Oh. To to flying tiger, airplanes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he he was not the the pilot, he himself. He was the pure. He operates the pure, how do I don't know how you how you name the the the, the, the position. He supply fuels. But if you will get that information to us, we will make sure that he gets mm -hmm. registered. I don't know if he's alive or not, but. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Are, you're not talking about the Mr. Chen that was from San Francisco? No, here locally. Okay. You Monterey Park. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. And ahead, we are ahead. working with the uh, Flying mm. Tigers. Uh, you know, the, uh, s some of the representatives uh -huh. there, like Tr uh, Charlie, are, are good friends. So, you know, um, uh, we're doing our best, but they're so few and far between at this point because of the age. Just to think emotionally, uh, they've been waiting for all life. Yes. Right. Finally just before their last breath, when they see this gold medal. I was so excited when we were at the White House, there was a lady, she was 100 years old, Elsie is her name, and she was a veteran, and she had traveled not too far from Pennsylvania, I believe, so she was local, but she was in a wheelchair, 100 years old, and she did a lot of the uh, kind of uh, the intel, the, spy, the spying oh, stuff, so yeah. it was really great to hear oh, her story. You remember nice, her, right? Yeah, yes. Nice, yeah. 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 And I, um, I myself had interviewed to put on video uh, some veterans from the uh, Sacramento area, mm -hmm. and now two of them have passed away. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I was particularly um, uh, taken aback that yeah, we weren't I'm, able to move know, the design yeah. and yeah, the Yeah, you were casting. trying so hard to run, to run against time. Yes. And yet there are still some who are passing away during the process. You really wish nothing happened during the process. Mm -hmm. You really wish they see something before their last breath. Mm -hmm. Now they didn't see it. All right, they didn't. We trust in God, right? Yeah. But by God, well, God would tell, tell them. Well, they will know. Yeah. Better late than never, and we can also do what we did at the Asian Industry B2B Banquet, is we honored the families of, yes, the descendants yes, of. Yes, 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 yeah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. But Jack, what is so important about the Nanking Massacre and your remembrance mm. of it mm. was that it was not only the Chinese Americans, but it was also the Chinese civilians and military yeah. in China that helped in this effort yeah. of, of peace during all these years. Mm -hmm. And so I was very um, honored to have the opportunity of helping create and in the installation of the first memorial mm -hmm. in the world to honor the United States cooperation with not only Chinese Americans, but the Chinese military and in Chinese China. civilians for oh. World War II. They deserve it. They deserve a big name. So. Back to you. In the very beginning, you mentioned one point, the friendship between China and the United States. U.S.-China friendship was built on blood, on life and death struggle. We shall never forget that. Yes. Right? Do you think so? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So, and that partnership, I also want to stress that again. The partnership, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's so many moving elements. When we heard Elsie's, when I heard Elsie's story, I was very um, heartened by the fact that 
Um, it's such a, uh, she was one cog in the wheel of a very big operation, which is that partnership within U.S. and China. And I really want us to come back to that, you know, and to understand and, uh, you know, for the last 30 years we helped, the U.S. was key in helping to build up China to the place that it is now. Yes, yes, we did. But yes, the, the did. U.S. now has to be uh, smart about, you know, making sure that level playing field is happening. To well, build, that's yeah. why I am so thankful that President Trump is walking mm -hmm. a very, very thin line. He is trying to keep negotiations open mm -hmm. with China mm -hmm. and at the same time not give away what we have given yeah. away so freely after in past all, years. After all, you're talking about not one country, but two countries. Correct. Yes. After all, you're not talking about one system, but two systems. Mm -hmm. After all, you're not talking about one value system, mm -hmm. you're talking about two value systems. Yes. That given as a fact, though. I would actually say beyond that. Mm -hmm. Because China um, has, is very powerful around the world right now as well. Mm -hmm. And in some of those countries, um, there is um, uh, control, effective control through economic uh, power that, mm. uh, the, that we must keep in check so that we all co coexist in this world peacefully. Yeah, yes, that course. that economic power doesn't enslave other countries Dependent to countries. give us. Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. request or ask for another country to do exactly what you do. Correct. But however, they do for economic Yeah, you however, gentlemen. when everybody do is in the range, in, within range though, mm -hmm. all right, now that you're talking about uh, the, the, the negotiation, the negotiations talk about, all right, let's make a rule. Rule a game, and then we follow the rules. We go on and on and on, remembering the subject for today. We call people, we make it a constant call to remember things, remember history, to stop history from repeating, repeating itself. itself. Exactly. That's right. And right. if we do not have economic fairness. fairness, if we do not have political fairness, we will go down that road yes. again, perhaps. And I urge China to think, for. to remember these human rights tragedies and atrocities like the Nanking Massacre. No, no, no. For that, I and disagree with you because. Uh, uh, definition, we, do, we better not play with the definition of uh, the tragedy, human right whatsoever. We just want to talk about the bigger things that people would do positively remember mm -hmm. what China and the United States had been friendly each other. Yeah. And then through that friendly negotiation and a talk, everything can be, can be shared. All right? For example, mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example, talking about right. All right, talking about uh, human right. Now, American concept of human right has 248 years of history ever since founding. Fair. Right? So, putting the same parameter in China, though, you give not 400, 248 years, you give 100 years in China. That was a time when human right was not even an issue at all. When the emperor says, chop the head off, and the head goes off, right? From that point on, given 100 years, even less than 100 years, to reach what China has reached so far, I call it a not easy job. No, it is not easy, but we do not want China to go backwards. I know, of course, of course. And nobody want, nobody want. And, and so I think that's that why I call upon people to remember things, remember the friendship, to work together. All right. That's right, and Very that's good. why we need to give President Trump mm -hmm. the freedom to be the able power, to do that. The power, the, the, the confidence, all right? Okay, yes. my dear friend, we are uh, way, way over time, but we know that it is totally worth it. Uh, thank you for watching, my dear friend, and to my uh, friend Betty, Betty Pelletom Chu, a wonderful leader, I call you fighter, and to Mark, and also a close friend, also a fighter, to both of you and your members, thank you very so much. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack.